Welcome to Open BX Rx Tuesday on BronxNet. I'm your host, Kim Aline, and I'd like to invite you to get social with us at BronxNet TV on Instagram and Twitter and BronxNet Community Television on Facebook. Public opinion on vaccinations remain a very controversial topic throughout the country. Despite those mixed feelings, the CDC recommends the pediatric COVID-19 vaccine for children ages 5 to 11 years old. Here to address concerns parents may have is Dr. Jillian Parekh. Doctor, thank you so much for joining us. My pleasure. So the, the, the Center for Disease Control and Prevention gave permission for children ages 5 to 11 to receive the Pfizer vaccine. What is this process expected to look like? Yeah, so it's really exciting. We've started to roll it out since November 3rd now, and it's very similar to how the adolescents and adults have been getting the vaccine. It's going to be a two-dose vaccine separated by 21 days in between. The biggest difference for this 5 to 11-year-old age group is the dose. So they're going to be receiving a much smaller dose, a third of the dose of the adults or the 12 and up. And this dose was based on the children's immune system, not actually their weight or their size, but how mature their immune system is. And the Pfizer studies show that this dose of a third um, is what was safe and effective for that age group. So that's the biggest difference. So just so we can understand why the CDC encourages the vaccine for children, how was this demographic affected by COVID? Absolutely. I think that's the most important question. And really, when I think about this, I think about two different ways that COVID is affecting children. So there's first the primary way where children are getting sick from COVID, but then there's also all of the disruptions that have happened from growing up in a global pandemic. And that's been huge. So when we look at COVID infections, we know that this age group is a little bit lower risk than some of the older community, um, but they're still getting infections. And as we're watching adults become vaccinated, we're seeing that the proportion of children being impacted is increasing, right? Because they're now the ones that are less vaccinated. And so we're seeing those numbers rise and up to almost 2 million 5 to 11 year old children have been infected with COVID. Some of them have had severe disease and there's even been some death. But then I also look at these sort of secondary effects and how much um, mental health issues there have been in our patients. We're seeing a lot of anxiety, a lot of depression, and actually the American Academy of Pediatrics just declared a national emergency for children's mental health. And we're seeing that in our practice. I think that a lot of these patients have been isolated. They've been a lot of fear. There's been a lot of grief. There's been school disruption. There's been academic loss. And there's been just a loss of those normal activities that we expect five to 11 year olds to be able to enjoy during a pandemic. So when we look at the effect of the actual virus and then these sort of side effects of growing up in a pandemic, I think the vaccine is really what we need to help protect this age group. Now for those working in public New York City schools, it's mandatory to receive at least one dose of the vaccine. Are children in the school expected to follow the same protocols? So there is not a vaccine mandate for children yet, um, but I think that the New York City public schools are doing a really nice job of encouraging children to become vaccinated. And in fact, they're even facilitating it by offering a lot of pop-up clinics in schools to allow the children or the students to get easily vaccinated. There is not a mandate to date. Okay, so that's really good to know. Um, what would you recommend for children who are actually about to be 12 in, let's say, a few days or a few weeks? Should they wait for the adult vaccine? An excellent question and one that we're hearing a lot from our, pa our parents and our families. Um, so I actually personally believe that the sooner you're vaccinated, the better. So if you're 11 and about to turn 12, go out and get the vaccine that's available for the 5 to 11-year-olds. If you were to turn 12 before your second dose is due in that 21 day interval, the second dose you will get will be the adult dose. So it's really what age you are on the day that you're being vaccinated. Okay, and then I'm just curious to know, is there, would there be any significant difference from having like the child dose and the adult dose? No, you'll still be considered fully vaccinated with both. Because again, that dose isn't really dependent on size, weight, but more your immune system maturity. And I think that both doses should be effective for the 11, almost 12 year old. All right, perfect. So what advice would you give to parents who want to, you know, wait and see in a few weeks or before they give their child the vaccine? 
So again, I would encourage the sooner the better. And especially as I'm thinking about the winter months coming when we tend to see viruses get worse, the holidays coming when a lot of people are getting together and celebrating. So I would love for this age group to be fully protected which again is two weeks after your second dose that you're considered fully vaccinated before those winter months and those holiday celebrations start to arrive. But I do understand that a lot of families are having some fears and anxiety about something new. And I think that if waiting would give a sense of comfort that a late vaccine is better than no vaccine. Um, but I, I am encouraging people to do it as soon as possible just to offer an extra layer of protection to our children. So we know that adults have so many different places you can actually go out and get your vaccine, but where should families go uh, to get their children the vaccine? Yeah, so there's also a lot of options for children to get vaccinated in different sites. And I'm so glad that that access is available for our families in New York City. So I'm encouraging everyone to go where there is access and availability for them and where the families are gonna feel comfortable. So we're offering the vaccines in our clinics at Montevideo, and we're offer, also offering some pop-up clinics. I think that's a really nice place for children to go because they feel safe there and sort of familiar and are used to getting shots in that clinic setting. But schools are also offering it, pharmacies are offering it, the New York City vaccine clinics are offering it, and really access and availability is key. Now, after receiving the shot, many were concerned about the symptoms that followed. Will children face similar effects after receiving their shot? Yeah, so the Pfizer study looked at this, and actually anecdotally now, in the last several days since we've been offering the vaccine, I've seen that kids are having less side effects, mostly some sore arm, fatigue, um, and really a little bit of headache. So similar, but lesser symptoms. Um, personally, my own children were vaccinated on the second day that it was eligible, and they did great. They were at school the following morning, at soccer practice the following evening. Um, I want to ask you about that as well. You know, what made that decision so easy for you? And I guess, like, how would you encourage other parents who are maybe afraid to vaccinate their children? Yeah. So for me, it's just such a huge sense of relief for my own children and for my patients. I can't wait to vaccinate them all. Um, just because I feel like I'm protecting them, I'm helping them protect their community. And then I'm hoping to avoid all of these disruptions that they've been going with remote school, canceled activities, quarantining, and sort of get back to a sense of their life pre-pandemic. Now, how should parents of children with disabilities or other health problems approach this vaccine? Really great question and really important. So children with chronic medical conditions are actually at higher risk for complications for severe um, COVID. So they are the patients that I really am encouraging the most to get the vaccine and to get it soon. These are the families before the children were eligible that I were urging all of the household contacts to be vaccinated to help protect their children. And so I'm ecstatic that now we can offer that layer of protection to the child themselves too. Now, will there be a vaccine for children under the age of five? And is that something that you would even recommend? Yeah, so the studies are ongoing for that age group for six months and up, and we're waiting to hear the data. Um, I believe that in early 2022, we're going to start to hear some of that data and go from there. Now, I think this is really important, and we don't really hear a lot of it, but would you recommend having a talk with your child about the vaccine, what it is, just so they understand what's the process they're going through? Absolutely, I do. I think that this vaccine, unlike many of the other vaccines that we give as pediatricians, kids are really understanding a lot about, right? They've lived through this pandemic. They know what COVID-19 is. They've seen what the virus can do. They kind of get it. Whereas other vaccines that we give, maybe for measles, mumps, rubella, they, they don't really understand what why we're preventing them from getting that. So I've heard from a lot of my patients and a lot of my children's friends, real excitement and some understanding about it. So I think it's really important to talk to them about what they're doing. I also think that they can really have a sense of pride that they're helping to protect their community. And that's really important and valuable for them. So I do think it should be discussed with them in a developmentally appropriate way, but I think it, it feels nice for them to know what they're doing. And I know we touched on it a little bit, but um, as a pediatrician, do you feels a sense of relief now that children have access to these vaccines? Huge sense of relief. I really do. Um, I think we've been waiting for this and just so excited to be able to offer it to our patients. And to my, as a mother, I feel that huge sense of relief as well. 
Now, um, I just want to talk about just quickly, maybe parents who are afraid that their child may be afraid or um, is there any fear? Like what advice do you have for parents who are just afraid of like their child possibly feeling hurt or just being afraid of going through this process? Right. So children are actually really used to getting vaccines. They, they get them so routinely throughout childhood that um, they're pretty familiar with the situation. We use a smaller needle for their for the vaccine with them. And I think there's comfort in that too. And just explaining this is like any other shot. But I do have to tell you, I have been hearing so much from the children themselves, sort of excitement for it, that my own son who has needle phobia and is really scared of vaccines, it went much smoother with this one because he knew sort of what this meant um, for him and his community. Yeah, and I think with this one, we talk about it a lot more than we've talked about any other vaccines previously. So I want to um, just talk a little bit about, you know, scheduling appointment. How can people learn more about that, especially with the services that Montefiore um, is offering? Yes. So um, scheduling appointments, you can go through your pediatrician directly and help that and they can help or we're going to put up here a place where you can go online and schedule the vaccine as well. Pharmacies are offering scheduling appointments and the New York City um, clinic sites are also scheduling appointments. And is there anything that um, parents should bring with them or like? For the first dose, just what you would bring to a normal appointment. And then at the first dose, you're gonna receive a CDC vaccine card and that's gonna sort of record the date of your vaccine doses. So you wanna to remember to carry that with you for their second dose because it will be their record. All right, perfect. Doctor, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. We'll be right back with more Open BXRX Tuesday.